My first project in the Garcia Laboratory was actually uh, looking at um, HIV transmission and persistence in the presence of only human T cells. So I started in a humanized T cell only mouse model and one of the questions that frequently uh, came up throughout that uh, set of experiments was what did I think would happen in the opposite system? So if we had a system that was completely devoid of human T cells, would we still see replication? Will we still see persistence? So for myself personally, this was a whole new area of study. Um, I knew very little about um, HIV and macrophages and uh, prior to that, my only uh, interest in macrophages had been confined to the relationship between macrophages and T cells concerning persistence in T cells. But in recent years, it's become a uh, bigger and bigger field within HIV research to look at uh, HIV and macrophages. And since we already had the humanized T cell only mice, we wanted to create and now start to look in the other. The biggest takeaway with all of this was that uh, macrophages uh, t in the tissues uh, represent a uh, viable source of viral production, and this was in the complete absence of T cells. So what we're showing is that macrophages are a genuine and bona fide target for HIV replication in vivo. As with pretty much any scientific experiment, we had a mixture of uh, surprise and uh, non-surprise. So one of the HIV isolates uh, we used in this study was HIV-1 ADA. We had picked this particular isolate as it's a laboratory adapted uh, strain of HIV that replicates very well in macrophages in vitro and in culture systems. So we kind of knew that, if nothing else, that one particular virus should replicate in these mice. Our surprise came when a transmitted founder virus also worked in these mice. So transmitted founder viruses are the one single isolate that typically is what establishes systemic infection in a patient. So historically, the transmitted founder viruses had always be, been considered uh, strictly T cell tropic, meaning that those particular viruses could only infect T cells. But what we found was one of our transmitted founder isolates that we tested in our studies, in this case, HIV-1 Chavi-40, uh, it actually replicated very well. So this would be the first demonstration that a transmitted founder virus can actually replicate well in macrophages. The first actual descriptions of HIV being present in macrophages actually um, started in the 1980s. So what scientists knew at that point is that they could find viruses in the macrophages. Um, where the interest specifically between macrophages and T cells started was in 2014. There were two groups around the same time that published uh, studies in this area. So uh, one group was looking at monkeys that were infected with simian immunodeficiency virus, or SIV. So this is uh, related to HIV. And what these authors noted was that in these animals, um, when they looked at the tissues, if a particular tissue uh, was depleted of T cells and you didn't find T cells in that tissue, even if you had macrophages, you wouldn't find virus in the macrophages. So um, they did some uh, follow-up experiments, but what they concluded was that the uh, myeloid cells were actually uh, acquiring a virus via phagocytosis, so they were engulfing the infected cells, and if you didn't have infected T cells present, they weren't finding macrophages that were expressing um, HIV, or that had HIV present. The second study that was in 2014, and these came out, I think, along within a week of each other, uh, was a group where they were looking at human cultures of cells, um, and so these were in a plate, and what they saw was that the macrophages were uh, preferentially um, engulfing the infected T cells in particular. So basically, it was these two papers that uh, specifically piqued our interest in looking at the uh, interactions between macrophage infection and whether or not you needed infected T cells to be present for that. So it's been demonstrated in vitro studies, so looking in cultures and plates, 
that you can get infection of macrophages, but what we didn't know was in the in vivo situation, was that something you could actually see? Um, and so there has uh, been another group, again, using monkeys infected with um, simian immunodeficiency virus, where they actually uh, used a, a T cell depleting antibody to try to um, answer this question more directly. And while they learned um, many important things from that study, the antibody doesn't deplete all of the sites and you still have T residual T cells that remain in the tissues and will then start to expand. So you don't have a, uh, an environment that is actually completely devoid of T cells. And that's what we were excited to be able to offer to the field.